Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about the good security recommendations, the hardening techniques that you can be putting in place to improve on your network security. So we are doing a series on security and the different security recommendations that you can be putting in place across various types of infrastructure. Today we are focusing on network and firewall security and things that you can be putting in place to improve on your network hardening and your security footprint. Let's talk about network and firewall security. Some good practices, some good policies and systems that you can be putting in place to improve on your security hardening and footprint across networks and firewalls. Implement a business grade firewall. This is imperative. Unless you have a business grade firewall, a firewall that has enough security built into it, there's really no point in having a firewall. Do not use a home router firewall as your primary firewall. Get something that is more secure, that has the right procedure so you can go in and actually manipulate the content of the firewall and put proper you know, processes and controls in place around a business grade firewall. Get adequate monitoring software systems in place to monitor your entire network. Not just your network devices, but also your servers and your storage and perhaps even your software. This is system software that ensures that your systems are running optimally, that you know the health of your system, that you know when data has been breached, that you know when systems are running unhealthy, you can prevent attacks, you can prevent systems from failing by having adequate monitoring in place. Ensure that all of your systems are routing via a firewall. If you've got a server, a computer, a network switch, anything, make sure that it is going via a firewall before it goes out onto the internet. There's no point in having a firewall in place if systems can access the internet directly without any control of through a firewall. The firewall needs to control that access coming in and out of your network so everything needs to be routed through that firewall. If there are external facing services or you need servers that need to be externally internet facing, get them into a DMZ or a DMZ zone. This is the zone that is secure, that needs to be set up to be completely isolated from your internal network. The systems and servers in this DMZ zone can be exposed out onto the internet, should not contain you know, business critical data because they do have internet, you know, they are internet facing, but they should be completely isolated from your internal network. If you have a firewall in place that is business grade, look at controlling the ports that are opened on that firewall. Don't have any, any rules. From point A to point B, make sure only the relevant ports are open. If you have a server here and a server here, they need to communicate over a particular port, have only that port open. Close everything else. Do never, well never ever use any, any rules. If you need to access port 3389 for RDP, have only that port open don't have other ports open. So control what ports are open on firewalls. Put adequate systems and procedures in place to control who gets access and what gets access into your network. You don't want people to just be able to walk around your office, contractors, customers, anybody just walking off the street, coming into your office, plugging into a network point on the wall, in a meeting room, anywhere, and access your network. They could introduce content that you do not want, malicious content that spreads through your network. They could also snoop your network, get information about your network, see data, see your IP ranges, all of these sort of things. So put systems in place to control access into a network. Don't let anybody to just be able to plug in and get access. Similar to that is implementing adequate Wi-Fi security. Don't have your Wi-Fi open for anybody to use. Wi-Fi should be controlled via preferably over Active Directory, so that you need AD credentials to be able to actually access your Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi should not be given out. If you have a password for your Wi-Fi, it should not be given out to anybody because anybody could literally just access your entire network by connecting into your Wi-Fi. Uh, they connect into your Wi-Fi and they can see your network, they introduce malicious software and you want to limit and control that. If you do need customers, or contractors to be able to access your Wi-Fi when in your office, look at setting up a guest Wi-Fi that is completely isolated from your other Wi-Fi and from your internal network. If you have unmanaged switches, switches that don't have any smarts behind them, they're called dumb switches, remove them and replace them with managed switches. 
managed switches have more control over what the ports can do, more security about what those ports can do, uh, while an unmanaged switch can't. Anybody could just plug into an unmanaged switch and gets access into your network. A managed switch, you can control exactly who and what the user can access via the ports on those managed switches. Look at setting up a uh, web proxy. This is something that um, your user needs to go through to be able to access the internet. So all of your computers are routed, your servers, everything is routed through this proxy. This proxy controls what access somebody has out onto the internet. You can block sites, so content that you do not want staff to be able to view. You can also control the amount of time that staff have access onto the internet. You can actually get reports to show you how long somebody has been spending on YouTube or on Facebook or similar. So putting a web proxy improves the security, make sure that you can only access sites that are approved by the business. So that was network and firewall security. I hope you found it helpful. There's a lot of stuff that we did cover in there and it's really just a good foundation for you to get started. But next time we're gonna be talking about the end user and workstation security. These are the users out in the fleet and security recommendations that you could be putting in place. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.